thanks for staying with us. Now, National Unity Day 2020 is celebrated all over India today. It's celebrated on the birth anniversary of Sadar Balhabahai Patel. I hope I did not murder his name. As he played a crucial role in the unification of India as seen today, he is also known as the Iron Man of India for his relentless um, fight against the British for freedom of India. Now, people celebrate this day by remembering him and his contribution to the unification of India. So it's important that we talk about how, I was just wondering, um, Lamy, when I was reading this National Unity Day for India, do we have a National Unity Day in Nigeria? You know, that just reminds us that we should stay united and stay together. Well, um, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't, I've never heard of that. And, um, think you said? Who what? I said, don't you think you need one? Don't you think we need one? Well, I think that would be window dressing if we just start, if we just decide to have a national unity day because there are quite a number of factors that divide us. And I think that needs proper attention before we start looking into national unity day and all that. I think that's just grandstanding as far as I'm concerned. Well, that's it. <laughs> all right, so uh, let me come to Tammy. Tammy, what did you find for us in the news today? Okay, so on the foreign scene, I found that the United Kingdom may go into another lockdown as a result of um, COVID cases. Over a million having COVID trouble cases. with Tammy's network. Okay, so would you like me go to ahead, go ahead? Let me take Lamy's story then. All right. Okay, this was um, from Femi Badabi Amila, who is the Speaker of the House of Representatives. I think there was a visit by the young parliamentarian on maybe solidarity visit. And what struck me with the news was the content of the discussion. It moved. You know, before it would have been a bit um, off. But from what he said, I think that this answers movement is actually gaining ground and we are consolidating it. I think we have done a good job because all what they talked about was centered around the youth, how to make provisions for employment for the youth and not just employment, wages that can actually afford a good lifestyle. Then the other words, how to integrate youth into um, the political scale. No longer are we excluded from it, they are listening. And the third is um, justice, you know, more access to justice. And the fourth one was education for all. So I think that um, the NSAS movement has done a lot and the conversation has started and we are really, we are moving rapidly, I can tell you. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I love the part particularly when he said that this federal character stuff should, you know, as it stands, it's not it's not um, it's not uh, structured to to bring out the best. Yeah, to you understand it? because you, you just have to come for him from the region. Mm. Okay, so tell me if you're there. Let's take your story. Yes, I'm going to get to that. But you before there? I do that, I just wanted to mention about your story. One thing I found interesting is that the federal character. You know, it speaks about inclusion. That's what the Speaker of the House of Rep was saying. He was mentioning that it includes inclusion of both sexes. It, uh, it involves inclusion of young people, people with disability, because federal character as it stands is about geopolitical, you know, of about regions, it's about states as it is now. But then there are other deeper issues that we'd like to talk about, including young people, including Absolutely. women, including people with disability. And I like that that he mentioned that. Now, moving on to my own story, it's on the foreign scene, and my story is from the United Kingdom. Uh, it's quite sad that the UK may be going into another lockdown as a result of um, over a million cases of COVID that have been recorded. And this is like the second lockdown that the United States may experience. This is following the COVID cases and what researchers have called a really bad case, but we're still set to listen to the Prime Minister of the UK, Boris Johnson, address us on this, or you know, and let us know the way forward. But it's really sad because states like, um, like for example, France and Germany also has gone into another space of lockdown. For Germany, it's been not as not full lockdown; it's been partial lockdown, but it's still some sort of lockdown to restrict and reduce the spread of COVID virus because the 
spread has been really bad. And it seems to me, not just for everyone who is sort of forgotten that we're, we're, we're fighting something here and we've sort of gotten back to everything normal. It seems like life is back to normal, handshakes, hugs, all of those things, you know, face masks, maybe not we're not enforcing as much as we should be and we're not reminding ourselves. And, and this is a reminder. This is not supposed to be some um, statement that brings fear, but it's supposed to be a good reminder that some of the practices that we've been, you know, taking on, like wearing our face masks, you know, like, you know, using the hand sanitizers, washing our hands, avoiding some physical contact. I think these are very good ideas and we should continue to put them into practice. Our prayers are with um, everyone who's living in the UK, everyone who's living in every other country that has experienced this increase, you know, and um, and it's, it's been a bad situation. Our prayers are also with our own country, Nigeria. You know, so that's what the news is about. All right, so uh, the network is a bit tricky today, so we're going to just um, make do with what we have. So we'll take a very short break. When we return, we're going to be discussing Nigeria and her unity, and we have Mustafa and Philip's to, to talk to us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 